This is BBC News. I'm Joanna Gosling. The headline. Hello, welcome to BBC News, broadcasting in the UK and around the world. China is growing at its slowest rate in 25 years. The government has issued the official figures for 2015, and with stock markets already nervous about Chinese growth, the latest figures are confirmation that the world's second largest economy has slowed dramatically. An inquiry into why pollsters' predictions of the British general election result last May were wrong by a wide margin has found the research methods were flawed. The surveys predicted that both major parties would fail to win outright and would be forced to govern in a coalition. In fact, David Cameron's Conservatives won an overall majority in Parliament. Here's our political correspondent, Alex Forsyth. Well, with me is John Curtis, Professor of Politics at Strathclyde University. Um, so the samples weren't representative enough. It sounds like a pretty basic error for the pollsters to have made. Conclusion then, they're a waste of time. We can't trust them again. Thank you very much. Coming up at 11. Parents and teachers in English schools are being given new advice on how to protect children from being politically radicalised. The Education Minister, Nikki Morgan, says she wants to prevent young, promising pupils from falling under the spell of what she calls twi twisted ideologies. Here's our education correspondent, Mark Ashdown. Speaking on Radio 4's Today programme a little earlier, the UK Education Secretary, Nikki Morgan, said that the website covered all forms of extremism. Doctors' leaders have warned that hospital emergency departments in Wales are operating on the edge with staff shortages and overcrowding causing long waits for too many patients. The guitarist and songwriter Glenn Frey, one of the founding members of the Eagles, has died in New York at the age of 67. Glenn Frey of the Eagles, who has died at the age of 67. You're watching BBC News. And that's it from me for now. For a full summary of the news, you can go to our website where you'll be able to get more details. Lines at 11. Good morning. Welcome to BBC News. China, the world's second largest economy, has reported its weakest economic growth in a quarter of a century. It now stands at 6.9 per cent, which may sound high to us, but it is well down on previous years. And with stock markets already nervous about the Chinese economy, the latest figures confirm it has slowed dramatically. China's problems have contributed to a nervous forecast this morning from the International Monetary Fund, which says the global economy is facing substantial risks in the year ahead. Well, Ben Thompson is here to explain. Ben, over to you. Joanna, thanks very much. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, here in Britain, the cost of living, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, has edged up slightly. The December figure was 0.2%, which was up from 0.1% in November. The rise was mainly because of a sharp jump in airfares. Prices for food and alcohol were again down, continuing to leave inflation at its historic low levels. Well, uh, there's loads of economic uh, news around today. Uh, at midday, the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, is going to be speaking. We will bring you coverage of that. Also, uh, the Chancellor, George Osborne, is answering Treasury questions. No doubt he'll be addressing all of these issues that we're talking about today, the uh, slowing growth in China, the inflation figures out today, which show, again, the, the, the picture across last year was, was pretty flat. So all of these, um, very interesting, of course, when looking at uh, the implications for the UK economy and what happens with interest rates, uh, whether we'll get any pointers from Mark Carney on that. We'll have to wait and see at midday, but we'll keep you up to date on all of those economic developments. Now an inquiry into why pollsters failed to predict the decisive Conservative victory in the general election has found the research methods were flawed. The surveys predicted that neither major party would win outright and would be forced to govern in a coalition. In fact, of course, David Cameron's Conservatives won an overall majority in Parliament. Up at 11.30, we will be joined by political journalists Sebastian Payne and Joe Twyman from UK. Now, some breaking news to bring you. We're just hearing that a family court judge has found that a 13-month-old girl, Poppy Worthington, was sexually assaulted before her father, shortly before her sudden death. Um, a judge uh, was ruling on whether 
the little girl had been sexually abused before her sudden death after she was found with serious injuries at her home in Baron Furness in Cumbria in December 2012. She was taken to hospital where she was pronounced dead. Um, now at uh, quarter past 11, let's bring you right up to date with our headlines. Doctors leaders have warned that hospital emergency departments in Wales are operating on the edge with staff shortages and overcrowding causing long waits for too many patients. Well, we can speak now to our correspondent in Cardiff, Thomas Morgan. Tell us more, Thomas, about the, the picture in emergency departments in the health service in Wales. Breaking news to bring you on uh, Lord Greville Janna uh, over those sex abuse allegations. Uh, we are hearing that an independent inquiry has found that three chances were missed to prosecute him over the sex abuse allegations. It's a CPS independent, uh, sorry, the, the, the report says that um, CPS independent report found the decision not to charge Lord Janna in 1991 was wrong. There was enough evidence then um, to charge him. There was a report in 2002 that allegations against Lord Janna were not supplied by the police to the CPS. No prosecution was possible. We're just getting actually some scant headlines through on this. It's not completely clear at this stage what, what those are. But basically the CPS has, um, is now reporting on an independent inquiry into the handling of the allegations against Lord Janna and uh, the, the main headline is that three chances were missed to prosecute him over sex abuse allegations. Uh, there was to be a hearing to look into um, the allegations against him but he was not going to be uh, present at that hearing because of the state of his health. It followed on from the CPS uh, originally saying that uh, he couldn't be prosecuted and that was subsequently overturned. But he subsequently died before the hearing could go forward and now we're hearing that there were three chances missed to prosecute him. Right, we'll uh, bring you up to date with, with all the latest on that as soon as we get it. Now, though, a decision by police at Heathrow Airport to detain the partner of a journalist who had been in contact with the CIA whistleblower Edward Snowden was lawful, according to judges at the Court of Appeal. David Miranda had material seized from him in 2013, which was later said to contain classified UK intelligence documents. His partner, journalist Glenn Greenwald, had worked with Snowden, a former CIA analyst, on stories about US and UK surveillance programs. Well, it's a complex story, so let's get the latest stuff. A few um, problems with the sound but we we heard everything thank you Ben the security service MI5 has been named as the UK's most gay friendly employer after a survey by the gay rights charity Stonewall MI5 came top of Stonewall's 400 strong list of the best places to work for lesbian gay bisexual and transgender employees the survey assessed things like staff engagement and career development the film director Spike Lee and the actress Jada Pinkett Smith say they will boycott the Oscars after no black actors were nominated for the second year running. The head of the American Academy has promised dramatic change. The headlines are coming up on the BBC News Channel. In a moment, we'll say goodbye, goodbye to viewers on BBC Two. Uh, don't forget, we will have full coverage of the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, with his first big speech of the year coming up at midday. This is BBC News, I'm Joanna Gosling. The headlines at midday. So coming up, an Oscars backlash after no black actors are nominated. Good afternoon, welcome to BBC News. China, the world's second largest economy, has reported its weakest economic growth in a quarter of a century. It now stands at 6.9%, which may sound healthy, but that is well down on previous years. And with stock markets already nervous about the Chinese economy, the latest figures confirm it has slowed dramatically. China's problems have contributed to another warning this morning from the International Monetary Fund, which says the global economy is facing substantial risks in the year ahead. Ben Thompson is here to explain more. We're expecting as well to hear from the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney in just a few moments, so you may not get very far with your explanation. And he's obviously got all of this data feeding into what he's about to say. Yeah, his first keynote address that he'll make this morning and he's going to lay out all details about what he thinks is going to happen with the state of the UK economy but also taking the influence of the world economy too. We've seen these big falls in stock markets of late, that prompted by a slowdown in China. I think what we'll hear a lot of in this speech this morning are two words, caution 
and uncertainty. They don't know what's going to happen to the global economy. We all thought things were getting a bit better, but it's not quite as good as maybe many had believed in the past. So I think in the context of all of what we've heard from around the world at the moment, it'll be interesting to see what the Governor, Mark Carney, makes of it and what his forecasts are for the UK. The British Medical Association has said it is suspending next week's planned 48-hour strike by junior doctors in England. Talks continue between the union and the government on a proposed new contract. The government says the decision is extremely welcome. Well, we can go to our health correspondent. A family court judge has found that a 13-month-old girl who died suddenly at home had been sexually assaulted. Fiona Trott at the Crown Court in Liverpool. Right, let's go to Louise Lear. An inquiry into why pollsters failed to predict the decisive Conservative victory in the general election has found the research methods were flawed. The surveys predicted that neither major party would win outright and would be forced to govern in a coalition. In fact, David Cameron's Conservatives won an overall majority in Parliament. Let's talk more about uh, what the uh, findings are today about where the polls went wrong. First of all, um, there's been lots of analysis and uh, explanation as to where the pollsters got it wrong it's now being said that it's because the samples weren't representative enough it sounds so simple as to be completely obvious to accept this as a, a definitive explanation for why things were so wrong thoughts well just listening to Ben I agree with him he you said there that opinion polls matter and they're useful uh, some people have said that these were actually worse than useless because they skewed the debate around an absolute assumption that there would be a hung parliament and Labour say that that potentially shifted voters into the hands of the Tories do you think enough lessons have been learned f for this not to happen again well, one answers as we're going along, and that's why everyone yeah. Especially likes. Especially journalists. You know. <laughs> so we, we seize on the opinion polls. Yeah. But would a, a general election campaign be worse without them? What about just banning them during election campaigns? Well, some people... And Paige, thank you both very much. Thank you. An inquiry has found that three chances were missed to prosecute the late peer, Lord Janner, over sex abuse claims. Doctors' leaders have warned that hospital emergency departments in Wales are operating on the edge with staff shortages and overcrowding causing long waits for too many patients. Our headlines on BBC News at quarter to one. Let's go to our assistant political editor, Norman Smith. The film director, Spike Lee, and the actress, Jada Pinkett Smith, say they'll boycott the Oscars after no black actors were nominated for the second year running. The head of the American Academy has promised dramatic change. Laura Trant reports. A tale of gothic horror, a Victorian melodrama, the story of an heroic World War II pilot, the life of a German scientist and a collection of poetry. They are all vying for this year's Costa Book of the Year Award. We can talk to Kate Atkinson and tomorrow we'll hear from the poet Don Paterson. And on the 26th of January, we will be covering the awards ceremony live in a special programme from 8.15 here on the BBC News Channel. Right, the one o'clock news coming up in a few minutes' time with Simon McCoy. First, though, time for weather update with Louise. Hello, you're watching BBC News with Joanna Gosling. An update on our headlines at just after half past one. Right, let's catch up with all the sport with Ori. Hey. A heterosexual couple have begun their legal challenge to the ban on members of the opposite sex entering into civil partnerships. The Civil Partnership Act, the civil partnership Act which covers England and Wales, stipulates that just same-sex couples are eligible. But Charles Keaton and Rebecca Steinfeld say that forces them into marriage. Let's go to our legal times, but um, we could hear everything that they were saying. Just about. An inquiry into why pollsters failed to predict the decisive Conservative victory in the general election has found the research methods were flawed. The surveys predicted that neither major party would win outright and would be forced to govern in a coalition. In fact, David Cameron's Conservatives ultimately won an overall majority in Parliament. Well, earlier I spoke to the chief political commentator of The Observer, Andrew Rawnsley, and Ben Page, who's chief executive of the polling organisation Ipsos Mori. I started by asking him about the inquiry's findings which said the samples of people were unrepresentative. To accept this as a, a definitive explanation for why things 
were so wrong. Thoughts? Well, just listening to Ben, I agree with him. He t you said there that opinion polls matter and they're useful. Uh, some people have said that these were actually worse than useless because they skewed the debate around an absolute assumption that there would be a hung parliament and Labour say that that potentially shifted voters into the hands of the Tories. Do you think enough lessons have been learned t for this not to happen again? Well, one answer as we're going along, and that's why yeah. everyone likes. Especially likes. journalists. You know. <laughs> so we, we seize on the opinion polls. Yeah. But would a, a general election campaign be worse without them? What about just banning them during election campaigns? Andrew Rawlsley and Ben Page talking to me earlier. In a moment, we'll have a summary of the business news this hour. But first, our headlines on BBC. See you later. You Thanks, Alice. Coming up here on BBC News in the next few minutes.